Um, the first thing that I would like to say is I'm sure if John was here that he would want to say thank you. Um, thank you to you guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Lynn, for, um, for being the family that you were. You truly took care of him. You truly loved him. And I know when I walked up and I said, that's the, you know, and I said to you, you really took care of him. And you said, well, that's the way you're supposed to be. Not every family is that way. So thank you for loving your dad. Thank you for loving John. Thank you very much for caring for him. Um, some of the best things that I have been told was when um, John really struggled at the end of his life, that you pick him up and you take him to watch airplanes land, that you bought a motorcycle with a sidecar so that he could ride with you. I mean, all of those things I'm sure were priceless to him. And I'm sure he'd want to say thank you if you hadn't already done so. But thank you very much. Um, I was told that John took the boys and, and when he raised them that he started and brought them to church. And that you guys attended church for a while, but then when you got older, you kind of faded away from church. And that, that John faded away from church. And he loved fishing more than he loved church. <laughs> now, I love fishing also. <laughs> so I can understand that. And I also know that um, once Lynn and John started dating that they came back to church. And it was a beautiful thing for me to be able to ask you about his faith. And when I said, was he a Christian? Did he believe? And you said, yes, he believed he was a Christian. And once you told me that, the scripture that came to mind to read first is um, Psalm 23. Because it reminds us that the Lord is with us always. So I'd like to read that first. The passage tells us, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What I thought of was that the Lord walked with John throughout his life. He walked with John, and he'll walk with each one of you throughout your lives. During the good times, he is there celebrating with you, and during the difficult times, he's there strengthening you and encouraging you. And during his um, Parkinson's, cancer, all of the different issues that he faced, the Lord was with John. And the Lord actually was with John as he transitioned from this world to the next. And he's still with John today. The passage tells us, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the second scripture passage I thought of was um, John 14. And this is why I selected this text. I was told that John was a very um, joyful person, that he was humble, he was quiet. He always said thank you to everyone. He was a very appreciative person. And when he would say goodbye to a person, instead of saying goodbye, he'd say, see you later. But towards the end of his life, he started to say, right in the last week, goodbye to people. He said goodbye to Lynn. He said goodbye to different people. And this is what he said he saw. He said that he saw this big white ship coming. And the people around him would say, what do you see? And he'd say, I see this big white ship coming to me. And this is what I imagine. This is not in scripture, but this is what I imagine. That that's the way the Lord came to get him. Isn't that a cool thing to imagine? And let me read the scripture that helps me to understand that. John 14, Jesus' words tell us this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you. 
my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Um, that is the summary of our entire faith, that when we believe and confess in Christ, that we have the confidence that he's going to come to us and take us to heaven. Now, how he takes us to heaven? Do we get a ride up on a cloud, or does a big white ship come and get us? I don't know, but I know he'll come and get us. So if you want to see your dad again, if you all would like to see John again, please have faith and trust in Jesus. We're given the gift of heaven, and we can be reunited with our loved ones. So please, believe and confess. Let us pray.